Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and I'm selling the majority of the equipment I own. And this is not clickbait or hypothetical or maybe in the future. Two of these four machines are for sale today. The other two I don't own, but they're out here because they aid the conversation a little bit. And, you know, I, I like to be brutally honest almost to the point that it makes it uncomfortable or maybe it's not even everybody's business but i want you guys to understand the decisions i make with this equipment and what i'm really hoping is that someone who's a fan of the channel and watches all the time buys this tractor and sends me updates on how they how everything goes with it so what i have is a john deere 2038r with 800 hours on it and a John Deere 325G skid steer with 240 hours. And both of those machines are for sale today. And what I want to do in this video is give a kind of all the information that a buyer would need. So if you're interested in buying one of these two machines, I want to tell you everything there is to know about it and what the price is and how to get a hold of me if you want to buy them. Now the decision to sell these machines has been a difficult one for me because I have a really special place in my heart for both of them. The skid steer is just an absolute monster. Like it does not ask permission. When you go to do something, it's going through whatever you're doing. And it's an amazing machine. It's super productive. You can do so much without putting a lot of hours on it. And the John Deere tractor was my first piece of real equipment I've ever owned. The first tractor I really ran. And I feel like saying goodbye to it, it's like losing one of my kids or something. It's I really do have an emotional attachment to that machine. But at the end of the video, I'm going to tell the whole story of why I'm making these changes. And what machines I'm still going to have. What my replacement machines are going to be. But right now what I want to do is give an in-depth explanation of what's for sale. It's not just the tractors. Most of the attachments that you've seen on my channel are for sale. Because those attachments go for these machines. Now some of those attachments I'll be able to keep and use on what I'm getting. But most of it is for sale. So I decided to jump in the cab to do this explanation because there's a bunch of wind noise out there and I want to make sure you can hear me all right. So this is a John Deere 325G with 245.4 hours on it. And I'm going to continue to use it until it's sold. But I've never had a single problem with this. I rolled the track off once right after I got it, put it back on, no more problems. The tracks have a ton of life left in them. They're not showing that much wear. And if you guys are into heavy equipment, you know that 250 hours on a compact tractor, it's enough to think about maybe. But on this, that's like two months of use if you were a construction guy or something. I'll probably throw in some clips here to show you some of the work I've done with this. But it is an amazing machine. And the great thing about both of these machines is, if you're seriously thinking about spending your money on either of these, I have hundreds and hundreds and a thousand videos on that tractor especially and i have a playlist on the tractor for every problem i've ever had broken bolts something wouldn't work i had to replace parts every problem i've ever had is documented in a playlist called like 2038r problems and i will put a link in the description of the video where you can see every problem that machine's ever had the skid steer does not have a playlist like that because it's never had a problem. I got this machine fully loaded. It's a 9,500 pound, 75 horsepower machine. I got it that way so I could haul it without a CDL and it doesn't need def fluid. But when I was shopping for it, I got the machine that had the most power that you could possibly get for not needing def fluid and weighing less than 10,000 pounds. This skid steer will push harder and lift more than any other brand. Now I've talked about other brands I like and what I like about different things, but this is an awesome machine. And I did not skimp on anything when I ordered this. 
it's got the severe duty door for running a mulcher that is going to protect you and keep you from having shattered glass thrown on you if you're brush cutting or something. That's an expensive add-on. It's got the high flow hydraulics. You know, it's got mostly whatever features I could get on it, I got them. And if you have any specific questions, I'll have my contact info in the description. You can reach out and we can talk about it. It's a fantastic machine. And there's not a lot more to say about it. Watch my review on this machine if you're interested. Now let's talk about that tractor. That tractor is my baby. It is... It was the perfect tractor to me when I bought it. I watched a bunch of videos and said that's the perfect machine for me. I was so sold on it. And there are things about that tractor that I think are better than any other tractor I've seen. Taking the backhoe on and off of it is perfect. It is fast, and easy, and just works. And the loader sub backhoe subframe goes way up under the tractor. Mid-mount mowers, phenomenal. Drive on and off of it, and it automatically connects the PTO shaft when you drive over the mower deck. I bring up those two attachments because with the tractor, if you want to buy my tractor, you have to buy it with those two attachments. Everything else is optional. If you want my box blade, or you want my tiller, or you want my rotary cutter. Those are all going to be optional that you can add on and we can negotiate price. But the reason it, two attachments have to come with it is you can't just add those two things. If you already have a 2038, you can't just buy my mower and put it on because you have to have the full setup for it. You have to have the electronic controls. You have to have the undercarriage and so it's very difficult to sell a mower, a mid-mount mower for that tractor by itself. Same thing with the backhoe. You have to have the hydraulics for it and you have to have the subframe. So those two things will be sold with the tractor. Now let's talk about the upgrades on that tractor. And also every single upgrade that I talk about, I have a video about. If you're ready to spend your money on this, you could watch a dozen videos and you would never find like a Carfax report that tells you more about it. For instance, you go to buy a used car and you say, I wonder if anyone abused this car. Well, you know, I abused that tractor. There's video evidence of me being rough on it. But also, it runs today like the day I bought it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's an amazing machine that I'm super productive with. When I got the tractor, I got it fully maxed out with everything you could put on it. At the time, it was a $27,000 tractor. I paid $53,000 to get it with everything I got it with and all the upgrades. It's got dual rear remotes, an expensive option. It's got the Power Beyond for the backhoe. I also, originally when I got it, I ran hydraulic hoses from the third from the rear remotes up to the third function but I didn't like it so I had an extra set of hard lines ran up so this tractor has an extra set of hydraulic hard lines that can be used as a third function if you want to or you need to or you have a problem I also do have a regular third function it's not a true third function it's a diverter but I like the diverter it works perfectly fine once you get used to it you push the button and open and close is your side to side movement also with the tractor, I got wheel spacers. It is at two, I don't remember if it's two inches or four inches that my stance is widened out on the tractor. Really helps for stability on a machine that can be prone to rollover. So really nice add on. Then I added three sets of wheel weights. Wheel weights are super expensive. I think you're looking at like $700 or $1,000 to get those wheel weights. I'm thinking it's $1,000 for three sets on each side. And those are already on there. I've got the mechanical self-leveling loader. That was an expensive upgrade. I got mine with a non-self-leveling loader, ran it for 100 hours with a regular loader, then I paid $2,600 to upgrade to that self-leveling loader. And... I'm going to be telling you guys all the stuff that I've added to this, and it is a long list. When you talk about the tractor that originally cost $27 when I bought it, now it costs 32 
I've done 20,000, 25,000 dollars of upgrades that are going to come with it that won't really raise the price that much. What you're going to get is the, all these long list of upgrades, but it's got 800 hours on it. So, along with paying 2600 to upgrade to the self-leveling loader, I mentioned the backhoe, which is a $9,000 option, and part of my 53 I paid for it. On that backhoe, I've done at least $5,000 of upgrades to the backhoe. I upgraded both of the cylinders on the backhoe to a larger bore, makes it much more powerful. I added a quick attach to the backhoe. I added an extra wide bucket, a trenching bucket, and a ripper. All of that is quick attach, so you can switch easily between them all. And whenever I mentioned what I spent on the backhoe, I was kind of including the Hydros Plus there. Because the $5,000 number I was thinking of is for the Hydros Plus kit, between two backhoe cylinders, a larger hydraulic pump, and bigger loader cylinders, you're talking about about $5,000 in upgrades to be able to lift more, work faster, do two functions at a time with your loader joystick. The tractor just performs a lot better now. Next upgrade that you get is a cab. And this is an economy cab. It is not as nice as a factory cab, but it is phenomenal for me. I'm a huge fan. It's even better in a northern climate, maybe not quite as good in a southern climate, but worst case scenario, what you have is a full-time canopy. But for me, it's a lot more than that. It's protection, and it's got, you know, a dome light, it's got a wiper, it's got a heater, it's got three different sets of doors. When Curtis came out with that cab, they sent me all their different options they sell. You can buy an Advantage cab, a Plus cab, or a Base cab, and I've got all three. So you're getting all three cab options if you get this. It's got a solid back glass with a wiper on the back. It's got eight extra lights, LED bright lights angled in every direction around it. Those lights are high dollar and they're included. Now the top ones, the two on the top, the wire got pulled out when I hit a branch and they need to be wired back into the little box and I haven't got around to it. I mentioned that I added all of the B expanded parts for the backhoe. The tractor also comes with an add grapple that will be included because it's on the factory bucket and it will include a piranha bar. That add a grapple with the third function and the piranha bar, you're looking at about another $2,000 of upgrades. The cab with just the Advantage cab, with all of the things I added and the lights, you're probably close to $5,000 plus you get the extra doors. I've also switched the tractor over to flat-faced couplers, which are much nicer and more convenient to use. I also upgraded to extendable lift arms on the three-point. You normally cannot get those with this tractor, but I've got a set that are actually meant for another tractor, but they're an identical length and identical hookup. So I've got the ones that came with it as a backup, and those will be included, and then I've got the extendable set. It also comes with a hydraulic top and tilt kit that hooks into your two rear remotes. The hydraulic top and tilt is about $1,100 with the hoses and the fittings and the two cylinders and everything that goes along with it. So when you look at all that, you really do have over $20,000 of add-ons that are coming with the tractor. And I'm going to say I'm going to price it about $5,000 more than my market research tells me that that tractor cost by itself. And honestly, coming with the backhoe, I think I'm selling this pretty darn cheap. So let's talk about numbers. The skid steer, I have not settled on a number yet. I need to do my research. This machine, when I bought it, was like 78,000 or something. I'll have to look up the paperwork. And I bought it with attachments. The total was 100,000. For this machine with very low hours on it and never had a single problem, I'm gonna want a lot of money. I don't know what the number is yet. 
I'm going to maybe go in some Facebook groups and ask questions, look at what other people are selling their, those for. You can email me or call me and, and throw out a number if you want to buy it. The tractor, I do have a number. So I was just talking to a dealership that gave $25,000 for that same tractor on trade-in. That's trade-in from a dealership. That tractor had a little bit less hours, and it, but it only came with the mower deck. I'm including a $9,000 backhoe. So right there, that would take you to $34,000 if you gave full price for the backhoe. But I'm going to say it's about $30,000 with the backhoe. I'm asking $32,000 with $20,000 of upgrades on it. And if it doesn't sell quickly for $32,000, I might take it to a dealership that I've already talked to that's going to list it on consignment. And if I end up going to the dealership, you'll be able to get financing through them. If I sell it myself, you'd have to have your own financing or be a cash buyer. Now, I've told you all the good things. I've told you I think I'm selling it at a really competitive price and why I think it's worth that price. John Deere keeps the resale. I've been watching for months to see what other tractors are selling at. I see a lot of $28,000 and $30,000 tractors in this model with maybe four to 500 hours is the, what I keep seeing and mine's 800 hours. So that brings the price down a little. And also I've had some issues with this. I've had broken bolts. I've had things I had to fix. I've had warranty replacements. I had to replace the hydraulic cooler. You can watch every minute of every problem I've ever had here on YouTube. So I think it's a pretty good deal. But I'm also telling you that with that Hydros Plus, it's crazy. This thing can lift 25 to 2,800 pounds, and that's dangerous. So I'm warning whoever buys it, do not utilize that full lift capacity unless you're doing it in a very responsible manner. It's a dangerous thing to have that much power on a tractor this small. This tractor today might be able to lift more than that 55 horse New Holland that is three times as big. This is a heavy tractor. And what it is not good at, it's good at a lot of things. It's phenomenal with that self-leveling loader. If you're moving freight, it's fantastic. If you're trying to set a log on a sawmill, it's fantastic. What it's not good at is pushing and pulling something that's really heavy. It's got 38 horsepower for spinning something on the PTO, and that's a lot for a little machine. The lift capacity is a lot for a little machine. What it lacks in is the ability to push or pull, like you guys saw when I hooked up my dull, mill misadjusted plow. It struggled to pull. And it, la it lacks some power pushing into something, and it lacks stability lifting and turning on a hill or over a bump. So that's the pros and cons to the tractor. I'm selling those two machines. What am I going to do for equipment? So what I've had was a big skid steer and a small tractor. What I'm going to have now is a small skid steer and a big tractor. One big machine for lifting heavy logs, one small machine for getting into tight places. I had that before and I'll have it now. Now this is the part where I talk about things that are just true and I want to save whatever's true even if it's a little bit uncomfortable to talk about. So which would I rather have? The bigger tractor with a mini skid steer or a big skid steer with a mini tractor? I think I'd rather have the, the two John Deere machines I have now. I think these two machines are perfect for what I do other than I'd like I would like a bigger tractor with more power at the PTO to bale hay and do things like that. So they're not perfect for what I have, but it's pretty good. So it's going to be interesting for me to find out afterwards. Am I better off with the machines I had or the machines I'm getting? So why am I making this change? The answer is I'm self-employed and I'm not wealthy. The two machines I have right now are financed through John Deere Financial, and I owe $100,000 on these two machines. And I, I can make the payments. I feel like I could pay these all the way off and stick with it and pay off all that debt over the course of the next three years and four years that I have left on these loans. But that payment is so high 
that I don't feel comfortable about it. Without a guaranteed fixed income, I don't have my retirement savings set up. It feels irresponsible to carry $100,000 of debt on these two machines. And that's all it is. And I've worked out a deal for the mini skid steer. That mini skid steer is here for two years. At the end of two years, I'll have the option to either buy that from them or return that from them. In the next week, you're going to see four more tractors on the property. We've got the New Holland that's here now. I've got two tractors being delivered on Tuesday and another tractor being delivered on Thursday. And that will wrap up along with I've recorded a couple of other tractor review videos. That will wrap up my series on comparing every tractor model that I could get my hands on. Once that comparison series is, is over, I'll have my new permanent tractor out here. It'll be bigger than what I've had and I'll have the mini skid steer. And I'll be reducing the amount of debt I have by $100,000. I've got kids and grandkids that depend on me, and I just want to be responsible with the money. And the, the hope is that I can, with the money I save by not having all this debt, I can at some point either work out a deal or just outright purchase a mini excavator to complement all this. But with these these deals I have on this equipment and clearing the debt, I'll run that equipment and decide if it's right for me and then I can either buy that equipment or I can buy my own new tractor, maybe something used, whatever. I might get a used Kubota. I just don't know. So for me, there's two things. I want to get out of debt and I want to show different equipment on the channel. Because as much as I like these machines, I've shown everything I can show on that John Deere. Anything you wanted to learn about that John Deere 2038R, I think I've shown it on the channel. I've ran everything. I've done everything. I've upgraded everything. It's ran its course. Let's get a new tractor and put it through its paces and make hundreds of videos about it. And then every video that me or anyone else makes is part of the information bank forever that is a buyer's guide for you guys. So if you want to buy one of these two John Deere machines, they're for sale right now. You can buy them. I've also got a bunch of attachments. You know what? Let me show you the attachments real quick, and then we'll wrap this thing up. All right, so here we are in the equipment building. This Harrow is not for sale. I'm actually going to be trading that in for a larger Harrow for the new tractor. It's the uh, Wingfield American Harrow, but the new tractor will be able to pull a bigger one. This bucket, actually, it's not for sale either. Someone's already bought that bucket. The Artillion Grapple is not for sale because I will keep the grapple and I will get a skid steer quick attach plate. This tiller is for sale. I use it, I've had it three years. I till about 10 to 15 gardens a year with it. See if we can get the model number on it. That is an RT1165. This is the bucket that you will get. This is the factory bucket that comes with the tractor. It has a piranha bar that's still in good shape. And it has this precision manufacturing add a grapple. That add a grapple works really well. Now, both of those things can be unbolted. And heck, you can, if you bought it and you don't like them, you can sell that add a grapple and the piranha bar. But I'm just going to include those in the deal. Okay, this is not for sale. This is a secret we're not going to talk about. This is actually not for sale, and neither is that. So, I was thinking I was selling everything, but I guess I'm not selling a lot of it for different reasons. I would definitely sell the carry-all. That one would be pretty cheap. I built this myself. Here are the two sets of doors. 
whoever buys the tractor will get all the doors. The other doors down there, I, 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 I've never used those. It's a plastic like roll up door and I wouldn't use those, but these are both good options. They have their advantages. This one has more visibility. This one's more sturdy and insulates better when you're running the heat. Besides getting the door, you would get this mounting bracket that allows you to hang the doors on the wall. The landscape rake is for sale. That one will probably be pretty affordable. Here is my brush cutter. It's for sale. Frontier RC 2072. Out of anything I'm selling, it's the only thing that's beat up because I pushed it. I pushed over small trees with it and bent in the back and I had to heat it up and bend it back a little bit, but it works. Next thing, here is the backhoe. Currently, so you, I forgot to mention on the backhoe upgrades, I have the thumb and then all the other buckets, including that trenching bucket. And whoever buys it also gets this stand that you can pick this up with the tractor and carry it around. Put it inside your shop or whatever else. And it's got the street feet from Hydros Plus, which is a really nice add-on. Also available for the tractor, I've got Woodland Mills wood chippers in multiple sizes and a Woodland Mills stump grinder available. So this bucket will come with the skid steer. This is not for sale. This is probably not for sale. I'm going to see if it will work on the tractor and if it will, I'm going to keep it. This is for sale. This right here costs $10,000 and I've used it about four times. So someone's going to probably get a good deal on a Harley rake. The tree puller is probably not for sale because I think the new tractor will be able to handle that tree puller. This is not for sale because I don't own it. This is for sale. And again, this is an expensive brush cutter and I haven't used it very much. I just total on the skid steer, I've got 240 hours. So most of the skid steer stuff is lightly used. And disclaimer, I think my friend Paul Case might be interested in that, but we haven't talked about a price. So there it is, all my equipment's for sale, and I'm excited because this is going to be a huge burden, a weight off of my back, reducing the amount of total debt I, that I carry. And it's also exciting because I'm gonna get to spend a lot of seat time in some machines that are new to me. So really excited to be moving forward. Probably within 10 days, I'll be telling you guys exactly what tractor I have now and the entire story behind it. So I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.